What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today and then we'll round it out with a small bit of information regarding WWE. So we'll be talking about Horoscope. We'll be talking about Saw X. We'll be talking about this upcoming loose remake possibly of misery we'll be talking about smile too and then again like i said we'll talk about wwe so just start off here with horoscope because that's been pretty tight-lipped as far as the plot but it sounds very final destination like so horoscope we know is a story that will be following a group of college friends who after getting their horoscopes read begin dying in ways connected to their fortunes are their fates fatal or can they change what's written in the stars we know the film is starring jacob Lat jacob battling or Battalone, Alana Bolden, Avantika, and the film will reportedly release this May. But what are some of the rumored story details that have not yet been made available to the public? So I'll just say allegedly and rumored. Allegedly, a girl named Haley, who lost her mother, became very passionate about readings and zodiac signs once it helped her realize that her mother wasn't going to make it in this struggle, I guess, that she died from now she's in college and does readings for her friends like elise natalie claire etc just to toss out some character names Haley and her group of friends get in trouble with this stack of tarot cards after breaking an unspoken rule the unspoken rule i know what it is i'm just not disclosing it they even have like this final destination like william bloodworth character for the friends to go to for help and I, i'm assuming other exposition dumping that will help them understand how to break out or escape their fates so this is again the final destination pre-event before we get found destination six because that that's exactly what horoscope sounds like now that i look into it and now have some understandings of what's going to happen in this story if you want other information i guess you can dm me and i'll share it with you but we're going to talk about saw x or saw 11 actually Costas Mandalore reportedly teased his return in Saw 11 during an Instagram live stream recently by concluding it with let the games begin. Those are all the words he gave because apparently he also stated he didn't have any information to share at the time. Now, the only other teases we've had in the past about Saw 11 is from one of the producers talking about how Cecilia is still alive and how John and Amanda are still in Mexico. But it wasn't necessarily a confirmation we'd be following them in Mexico as they hunt down Cecilia, even though that's the preferred story. I know a lot of people would love to see going off of that deleted scene showcasing that Cecilia did escape. Obviously, we already knew she was alive even without that deleted scene. Hoffman's return was expected but never officially confirmed and it still has not been officially confirmed just as Tobin's hasn't been made official but was made quite obvious and apparent going off of the story again in Saw X. I'd love to see Hoffman, Amanda, and John working together as a trio for an entire film instead of Hoffman leading the story. Cecilia being hunted by these three doesn't sound like an awful narrative direction to take either but we'll see how things go because the film is supposed to release in September and likely will shoot this spring this spring so we'll just learn more then as we get closer to that start date for production and again it also is likely to be shooting out in canada as well so we'll learn more about the story as we get closer to filming but what do you guys think about hoffman returning do you want hoffman back do you not want hoffman back was hoffman the reason you kind of got turned off from the saw series as it kept progressing into the later entries let me know why down in the comment section below we're gonna shift into this rumored misery loose remake that could be on the way so Trey Edward Schultz might be giving us a loose remake of Misery according to World of Real. This hasn't been announced by the director or any of the cast, but the film has already wrapped. Schultz co-wrote the script with The Weeknd and it stars The Weeknd and Jen Ortega. Now supposedly, according to World of Real, Schultz film is a loose remake of Rob Reiner's 1990 film Misery. In it, The Weeknd will be playing himself, a famous singer, and Ortega plays his deranged fan stalker. To make things more curious, last summer Ortega posted a shot of the house being used during production and it's practically the same one as in Misery. I hope this ends up being true honestly because while I'm not a diehard fan of that film, I love revisiting Misery whenever I'm in the mood for some Paul Sheldon, but obviously Annie loves him more than I ever will. <laughs> Ortega playing a deranged fan stalker type for some reason sounds like she would kill a role like that to me. I don't know how to phrase it, it just sounds very fitting. For her i could just see her crushing that role so i hope this is a loose remake of misery that we're getting i would love to see how this ends up being executed without it being a complete full-fledged recreation of what happened in that 1990 film so we're going to talk about smile 2 here 
Smile 2 has reportedly begun filming this week and it's shooting under the working title Too Much For One Heart. Previously, I've discussed Naomi Scott playing this massive public figure, which raises the stakes compared to the character of Rose, who didn't have the platform, this entity, or didn't have the same platform for this entity to thrive on the way Naomi Scott's character will in this sequel. All of this hasn't been confirmed by the studio, so I'll just say alleged and rumored for now. But we also know officially Kyle Gallner will be back as Joel, so that's good. But how big a part he has is still unclear. A lot of people are expecting him to be the opening kill, while some expect him to have somehow killed somebody, gotten away with it, doing some corrupt cop tactics since he was in law enforcement in the last film. I've also talked about a Pizza Hut filming location that they will be using for Smile 2 in the past and just wanted to share some clarity on that location. This location is apparently being used for a car crash sequence where someone drives into a dumpster after the Smile entity, I'm assuming, causes them to have an episode. My guess is that this will be Naomi's character, but I've also seen reports of a mental institution being present for this story as well. I have my hunches on which character will be present in said institution, but I will be following the filming of Smile 2 and sharing as much as I can on my channel or on my Twitter. You know where to follow me. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about here is for WWE. So... ESPN reported this and a lot of other sport related outlets reported that WWE's flagship program Raw will stream live on Netflix beginning in January 2025 live on Monday nights. So the deal announced Tuesday is worth more than five billion over 10 years. I've seen rumors of TV 14 being possible with this and how subscribers won't have to sit through ads, which I do like, but I really primarily want this third hour to disappear. Am I the only person that's tired of the third hour of Raw? I hope not. Triple H has been a better creative genius without Vince lurking over his shoulder the way we know he was in the past. And if you don't think he was, you're a fool. The deal is big news and unexpected because Netflix wasn't even on my radar when I saw that they were shopping for a new network for Raw. But I guess this will be Netflix's excuse going forward as to why they are price hiking us all to death now. But what do you guys think about Raw going to Netflix? Do you think this will be a success? Do you think it will not be, be a success? Or will this be one of the final nails in the coffin for you that convinces you to leave Netflix for those for those non-wrestling fans who I again I see a lot of price hikes because of this acquisition. But I think it will be a good transition off of their primetime television slot plot twist so we have one last thing about scream 7 because melissa barrera the lovely melissa barrera gave a comment about the firing once again so this was with the rolling stone but i'm reading it from this variety article melissa barrera said i'm not the first person that happened to but it was shocking in response to the firing obviously um she said, I don't even know what to say. I think everything that happened was very transparent on both sides. And I know who I am. And I know what I said always came from a place of love and a place of humanity and a place of human rights and a place of freedom for people, which shouldn't be controversial, which she's not wrong. It shouldn't be up for debate. So I'm very at peace. I'm assuming she's at peace with her firing. The people who know me and my family know the truth about me and where I stand. And I think most people in the world also do. Now, as we know, of course, Barrera was fired because of her stances that Spyglass didn't agree with and yada, yada, yada. Something that, again, should not have transpired in terms of her firing. She should still be leading Scream 7. And hopefully there is some truth that comes out of this alleged attempt on Nev Campbell's part, playing some role in a second round of meetings that happened between Barrera and Spyglass. Now, her comments don't necessarily make me think that those meetings went south. But I also haven't heard the most positive results from this alleged second meeting either. So time will tell what direction Spyglass will take Scream 7 in. Barrera also called her co-star Jenna Ortega a good egg. She said, listen, Jenna is a good egg. She's a good person and we love each other. She would show up for me and I would show up for her no matter what. So a lot of people I saw thought that this was a slight confirmation that Jenna actually left because of the Melissa situation. Again, I do not think that's why Jenna left primarily i think that that's what allowed jenna to then no longer consider even appearing in a cameo wholeheartedly i think the primary reason jenna did not come back is because of her commitments to wednesday season two but again let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video